thanks to the supporters of channel member Johnny Coma. Boys and girls, this is the most important game in the history of Bourne Town Football Club. Not only is it the League One playoff final at Wembley, but also we kind of need to win it or we're going to be in serious, serious, serious financial trouble next season. Um, it's the difference between us having to sell all our best players in the summer and maybe being able to keep them and strengthen it. It's the difference between staying at Abbey Lawn or moving to a ground share. It's um, it's huge. No pressure. Playoff final. <laughs> Hello and welcome to part 73 of Born Again. I'm Kevin coming up on today's episode. Just the one game, but it's a big one. It is the League One playoff final at Wembley against Charlton. The teams that finished third and fifth in League One last season. But that doesn't necessarily tell the whole story. If we go back and have a little look at the league table, um, as a little reminder, you'll see Charlton were top for an awfully long time and for for maybe half of that awfully long time we were we were in second we were the two teams that were supposed to go up automatically and both went off the rails at different points our season fell apart around the halfway point and um, but then our recovery started um there you can see that's our low point next game there the recovery started with a win over charlton which coincides with their season starting to go wrong we recovered all the way back up from 10th to this third place finish and we're this close to going up automatically again um whereas they continued their decline and ended up almost falling out of the playoffs altogether that being said, they did make it past Sunderland in the semi-finals, so they've got a little bit of form behind them now, but we've got to believe we're the favourites based on the shapes of those two seasons, although based on that, Charlton on their day are obviously a much better team than us. We just need to hope that today is not their day. You can see all the motorbike gangs turning up to watch the game live from the other side of the garage door. You can't see them, you can hear them, that's what that rumbling noise is. Um, so now they're in place. We can get involved in team selection. This is the team. You could have picked this yourself. You knew this was going to be the 11. And um, this is our best team when they are all fit. We've got Hardy in goal, a back four of Barnes, O'Driscoll, Kitching and Ralston, Dean and Clark in midfield, Querol, Palmer and Murray behind Pavlov up front. Let's cross everything. Get your get all your lucky charms spread out in front of you. Not the cereal, actual things that will give you luck. Spread it all out in front of you. Let's head to Wembley and let's hope. Because, like I said, if this goes wrong, it is disastrous for the club on so many levels. They're playing a diamond. Oh, I want to play a diamond. I love a diamond. Right. I'm going to take the pressure off. It's worked so well for us all season. We're the underdogs. We've come to Wembley as underdogs. We only got promoted last season. We have no right to be in this playoff final. Charlton are obviously a much bigger club than us. So let's try and put all the pressure on them and just see if we can have a lucky, fun, super duper day. Because it's no one's expecting us to be a championship club ever. So if we do manage to get there, awesome. That's a terrible ball from Palmer. And that is the worst possible start that we could have had to this game. Uh, Palmer makes an enormous mistake. Wembley is utterly deserted. I've never quite seen Wembley looking like this. Um, but Palmer, that is... If this doesn't go our way today, that was inexcusable. Hardy's wrong-footed and Charlton are 1-0 up already. And this this wasn't the script. This wasn't what was supposed to be happening. Um, the Bourne end is completely deserted. I cannot believe how few people are here. We're gonna, oh, I was going to do 10 minutes of early passion. Look at all the Charlton fans at the other end. They've turned up. It's our lot who haven't bothered. You, you get just past the halfway point and then you just see the place becomes deserted. There you go. Look, this is our end. And I don't know why our fans never sit together. Not only is there hardly any of them, but they clearly don't like each other either because whenever they do come to matches, they spread themselves out as much as they possibly can. Dean. Plays it forward, looking for Querol. Remember, Querol, big game player. He has previous for performances in massive games this season. Barnes with the cross, finds Murray. Murray gets the equaliser on 19 minutes and celebrates in front of thousands of Charlton fans who don't seem very happy about it. I mean, really, that should have been a yellow card for the celebration. Look at how few Bourne fans are here. The, the idea that we could one day be a championship team, let alone this season... 
ridiculous looking at how few fans we are. I'd be surprised if there's a thousand people here um, supporting Bourne, but Murray doesn't care. That's his 10th goal of the season. One of four or five players we've got now have made it into double figures for goals this year. We haven't had an out and out goal scorer. What we have had, how is that a penalty? Is many players scoring many goals? I don't understand what that penalty was for. If anything, Hardy's fouled there, but it is a penalty. Hardy is just a hero. He's been a hero so many times this season and he steps up and does it again there with a penalty, a Wembley penalty save for Hardy. He's too good for us. I, I think he leaves in the summer regardless. There's been so many inbox messages linking him with moves to championship clubs. I think regardless of what division we're playing in next year, Hardy is definitely playing in the championship. We've just got to hope that he can uh, he can drag us through a massive match one more time and help it be with us because then there's a chance that we can keep the rest of this lot around. Um, otherwise, it's going to be a very different team trying to repeat this job next year. This is, although we weren't supposed to go up this year, this is the best opportunity we're going to get for several years to get out of this division because if we do stay down at this level, we've got a we've got to trim £20,000 a week off our wage budget for next year. That was wild from Barnes. But another phenomenal save from Hardy. He is just a good goalkeeper. It's a lovely thing to have. Get that football out the way. Um, and another fantastic save from Hardy. People have been talking about who's going to be the first knighthood of the save. I mean... This goalkeeping performance is outstanding and he keeps doing it in these big matches. Um, another corner for Charlton. We are under so much pressure here and that one goes over. We need to get our act together in this second half to, uh, to get a bit of a grip on this game. We're not as poor as we seem to be playing. Uh, Querrell to Palmer, who's got some making up to do for handing them their first goal on a plate. Dean looking for options ahead of him, sprays it out wide, looking for Murray, but it's a poor pass, and Charlton intercept, and they are through on goal here. It was another another gift from one of our players. We're too sloppy about how we're playing at the moment. I th As much as I was trying to take the pressure off, I think we've gone too far, and they're just not taking it very seriously. So what can we do? I think we... I know we're right. Let's, can we passionately do? I know we're the underdogs here, but give the fans a performance to cheer for. All of those lovely fans that are here with us today. Get them all cheering us on. Um, <laughs> an attendance of 45,000. 43,000 of them are Charlton fans. So they've almost sold out their allocation. We've brought 2,000 people for a playoff final at Wembley. We do not deserve to go up, do we? It's it's pathetic. There was more people than that at the um, at the Southampton game at Abbey Lawn earlier in the year. So there's fans who've watched Bourne play this year but who looked at the trip to Wembley and thought, oh, no, that's... I uh, don't know if I can be bothered with that. That's a bit far. I'll, I'd have gone if it had been at Abbey Lawn, but I'm not going all the way to Wembley. Born people are weird. Right, we need we need a goal. We need to, we need to get control of this game a little bit. Um, I'm tempted to push to a more attacking mentality because when we've needed it this year, that has been something that has uh, sparked us into life in games. Oh, another goal for Charlton. And it is starting to feel more and more like we might be here a little bit, maybe a year too early in this playoff final. It's going to take an awful lot of character to find a way back into this game now. And let's face it, they've got 43,000 fans cheering them on. And there's no way that our fans are even going to be audible. Um, but we have a free kick on the edge of the area. Um, it's Clark to take. Clark... Mm. I'm wondering why Querrell doesn't take that when we've seen him score a couple of beauties this season. Um, but clearly Clark fancied it and uh, perhaps we shouldn't be listening to Clark. Um, right, Palmer's going to come off for Mr. Bourne, Terry Broadbent. Scargill comes on for Pavlov. We're going to push Clark further forward. We're going to go to an attacking mentality. We've got 20 minutes left. They're both very familiar substitutions. The last one will be O'Brien for Murray, but the reason we've not done that now is because Murray is playing quite well. Um, we're also going to ask for 10 minutes of passion and we're going to hope that we've got an equaliser somewhere. We're shooting towards the Bourne faithful. They need to suck the ball towards that goal at that end. If they all inhale at once, the power of 2,000 people should get the job done. Scargill, look, I think there's a red card here. This could be game-changing. 
With 20 minutes to go, Charlton are down to 10 men and this could be our opportunity. It could also be the danger of them just sticking all 10 of them behind the ball for the rest of the game now. But either way, we're running out of excuses for, for not winning this now. We've got a penalty. Right, Clark is stepping up for a 75th minute penalty against 10 men of Charlton. You've got to score this. We must score this penalty. Clark with the penalty. And he does score. And it's 2-2 with 15 minutes of normal time remaining against 10 men. And all of a sudden, we're starting to get a little bit of belief. This might be our moment to have the most ridiculous, unlikely promotion in the history of football. There's never been a playoff final won by a team with only 2,000 fans, surely. Right, what are we going to do as our final change? I don't want to take Murray off because he's playing well, but we don't really have much else to bring on. I think we'll just do the Mark Sheffield for Barnes that we've done many times before, just to give us something a little bit different down that left-hand side. Not concentrate! No, a misclick. I was aiming to get creative. Scargill with the corner. Oh, Murray heads just wide. I want to take that concentrate away. Why not give me a, are you sure you want to say concentrate, Kev? That's a weird thing to say. I want to tell him to get creative. Get creative. There you go. But it looks like we are heading for extra time, which I guess we're the team with the extra man. Extra time has got to favour us, surely. Right, passionately, we've been the better team here. Now I'm finally trying to give them a little bit of belief that they could go on and win this game. Um, I am going to take Murray off now if we can make a fourth change. Oh, we can't. I thought you could do four changes in this. Maybe you can't. Um, well, in that case, I might just drop down to positive mentality. Just go back to our normal way of playing for extra time because we don't want to be too gung-ho because they'll tire. They're going to tire quicker than us. There's 10 of them chasing 11 of us around. Get creative. They're nervous. We've got nervousness and apprehensiveness in the Charlton team. We just need an opportunity to go and grab a winner. Someone needs to step up and make themselves a hero. Quarrel, Mr. Big Game Player, crosses over to Dean and he hits the top of... I don't know if that's the top of the net, if that's the crossbar, but if that had gone in, I don't think I'd be talking for the rest of the week because my voice would have gone. 15 minutes left before penalties. Let's have 10 minutes of passion as part of those 15 minutes. Ralston to Clark. Back to Ralston again, who plays it. Beautiful ball into Clark. Cross. Quirrell is there! It's 3-2 with less than 15 minutes remaining. We've been calling him our big game player all year. Salvador Quirrell. I just shouted far too loud. I'm sorry to all of my neighbours, but my word. My word. What a moment for Bourne. What a moment for Quirrell. And now we just need to not mess this up. I know people are saying drop back now, but I don't want to. We're not good enough defensively to drop back. Just keep doing what you're doing, lads. Kitching plays it out to Mark Scheffel. Mark Scheffel, just keep the ball out there. In fact, do that. Cross comes into Murray. It's off the top of the crossbar again. Charlton are very much on the ropes now. And we're still relentlessly attacking at him. This is how Bourne defend, by attacking. Um, but Charlton have got a break on here and we need someone to get a tackle in. Kitching's there, but he didn't quite win the ball. And, oh, this is hideous. Oh, Hardy needed one last moment to prove what a goalkeeper he is. How many incredible saves has that man made in just this one game? Never mind the season as a whole. Dean heads clear. Clark is chasing after the ball. There's a minute and a half left. And we've, I think we've done it. We're in the championship. <laughs> Look at all our fans behind us. I'm pointing with my fingers. Point with the mouse, Kev. 2,000 people <laughs> crowding into Wembley. We could all, we could all share, go to the same restaurant after the match. Oh, my word. I, I think it was pretty clear. There were quite a lot of that match where I did not think we were going to do it. The sending off was so crucial. Holding the uh, the penalty, um, the penalty was uh, Clark holding his nerve for the penalty. Massive. The performance of Hardy was absolutely extraordinary. Goodness me, did he even get a good rating? He did a seven point three. What a performance from Alan Hardy. Only twenty two years old. He's going to get better and better. 
What a goalkeeper we've got on our hands there. And what a big game player Querol is. Did it even men enjoys big matches? Too right, he enjoys big matches. We enjoy him in big matches as well. <sighs> well, we're in the championship. I can see the budgets are there. So let's find out what the budgets are. Remember, um, we had zero transfer budget and our wage budget had been slashed from £90,000 a week down to less than £70,000 a week. So we are way over our wage budget at the moment. For us to have a realistic chance of surviving in the championship, we need a wage budget in the £150,000 to £200,000 a week range. I don't know if we're going to get it, but at least hopefully we won't have to sell anyone as long as it goes back to around the 100000 mark. So there's confirmation we've been promoted. We are in the championship next year. I have no idea where we're going to be playing football next year because surely we can't stay at Abbey Lawn. Um, there's your comp. That was one of the greatest playoff finals in history. Wowzers. And now, budgets. Okay. Was not expecting over a million pounds of transfer budget, that's for sure. But a hundred thousand pounds a week of wage budget means we're not going to have to sell anyone. And if we take the transfer budget away, we get a little bit closer to the wage budget I wanted. I, I think it's going to be a struggle next year. I think we've gone up a year too soon, but we've got some heroes in this team. And if we can keep them around. You never quite know what we're capable of, as we've just shown this season. Um, Alan Hardy praising me. Alan, for goodness sake. Praise where praise is due. King of the soul patch. <sighs> Thinks Terry Broadbent's an inspired leader. I think he is too. Well, £723,000 into the kitty as well. What does this do to the projection? I don't think that's taken into account championship TV money yet. That was that that was one of those matches that makes football manager the greatest game in the world. If you have not been watching this series, and I know you're not watching this now, but I'm gonna try and round people up. I know this series got off to a slow start, but my word, my word are we collecting some moments now with Bourne. And next season we're in the championship which is just crazy. If you enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.